If Dundee are still getting it together, you feel United should have a more settled look. New signing Paul Ritchie was given a place on the bench. From there he saw James Grady miss in spectacular fashion. Dunfermline, of course, have the benefit of their plastic pitch, but even on grass their goal would have come about from a fortunate bounce. Andy Todd, well placed to hammer home. A decent crowd of 6,500 at East End Park looking for signs of the new era under Davy Hay. Todd made it a good start for them, even though he's no Stevie Crawford. Again, Todd disturbed the United defence. His height caused problems. Barry Nicholson's shot should have caused even more. Nicholson, who is trying to add goals to his game, scored a few at the end of last season. He had another chance to start where he left off. Nicholson perhaps unfortunate, but the preserve of Lady Luck was reserved for United. No sooner had Jim Hamilton been introduced to the action, he made his presence count. It's Jason Scotland with the assist. The Dundee Derby looks too close to call at this stage. Dunfermline claimed their place in the quarter-finals with a comfortable win over Partick Thistle. After Craig Brewster had given the Pars the lead, Andy Dowie equalised for the first division side. Scott Thompson then showed he's lost none of his shooting power when he blasted the Pars in front before Noel Hunt got the Pars third. Spearman's header, here's Brewster with a very good bit of control. Dolish pass is excellent for Nicholson, this is Brewster! It's a magnificent goal for Dunfermline! Beautifully engineered and superbly finished! And the old man on the side, close to his 38th birthday, scores one which will rank with the best in a long career. After going down narrowly to Rangers on Wednesday, here's David McKinney. Barry Robson, the goal hero of Ibrox, had shaken off a thigh injury and it was a first start for Karim Kerker. Dunfermline's Greg Shields and Derek Young were victims of a busy week, neither able to shake off injury. Recent signs of recovery for both sides had to be tempered by the fact that each was still very much in relegation territory, so the importance of the game transparent to everybody. It never helps the mood or the nerves of a manager to see defending like this. Derek Stilley's challenge and Jim McIntyre as clear a penalty as you're likely to see, and the keeper can be thankful the player was going away from goal. Mark Wilson is making a habit of stroking penalties into the nets. Earlier in the season, the loss of an early goal would have proved catastrophic for Dunfermline, but there's sterner stuff in the team spirit now, and within a minute, Andy Todd had pulled him level. Just the response Davy Hay wanted, Todd's determination getting him to the ball ahead of the defender. We're still expecting a new Scotland manager this week, and whoever comes in might do worse than look again at Barry Nicholson. The former Rangers man is impressing once more, close to goal number two for the season. United's play was pretty at times, perhaps too pretty because the more direct approach of Dunfermline almost paid dividends, with Gary Mason firing both barrels towards Paul Jarvie. Ian McCall knows full well that poetic football doesn't guarantee success, and Jim McIntyre found out that even your best shot doesn't always beat the keeper. Still, he kept his side in it. More direct football from Dunfermline. This time, Simon Dornley peeled off the defender, but the shot lacked power and penetration. Jason Scotland's effort had both, but unfortunately for United, it was several inches too high. Scotland dangerous, but hardly prolific. He's still waiting for his first of the season. And not just as good a time for Craig Brewster this term. Although Jarvie took no chances, the shot was heading wide. A hard stare from the veteran. And as the game seemed destined to finish level, there was evidence of the fighting spirit that has been rediscovered at Infermline. Billy Mehmet made use of space in the flank. Darren Young made better use of the space he was allowed 12 yards from goal. And Infermline's perseverance and hard work had earned a Dundee double. A valuable three points for the Pars. United require a killer touch. With so many injury worries, Davy Hay at least could call on Darren Young and Craig Brewster as Dunfermline looked to end a three-match run without victory. Freddie Dandelou didn't make it for Killy, but Simon Ford and Gordon Greer played, even though not 100%. 
If Jim Jeffries was less than enamoured by the attentions of Sammy the Tammy, the Killy manager's mood wouldn't have been helped by the quality of defending that almost led to the opening goal. A double save by Alan Combe, keeping out debutant Greg Ross, and then Brewster. Speculation on Brewster's future has been growing, and if this was his final game for Dunfermline, he seemed determined to make an impression. He was involved again as the increasingly influential Barry Nicholson released Darren Young. Nicholson himself supplied the finishing touch. And Nicholson's second goal of the season coming at a time when his stock has never been higher. Playing for Scotland in midweek and scoring for his club, it doesn't get much better than this. The afternoon was to get better for Dunfermline though, as their short passing game bypassed an out-of-touch Kilmarnock side. Nicholson denied a second by the thickness of the post. It wasn't just the former Rangers man who was having a good day. Since his arrival from West Ham, Billy Mehmet has struggled to find consistency. His third goal for the club might change that. And he's obviously spent the last 17 months perfecting the celebrations. Perhaps his time has come to. Kelly had to score the next goal to have a chance. The manner in which they conceded to Scott Wilson would have been another source of consternation to Jeffries. Joy for Wilson, whose towering header effectively made the point safe just 12 minutes into the second half. Kelly might have been out of sorts, but when your opponents play as well as this, there's not a lot you can do about it. The pass from Nicholson again, perfectly weighted. Mehmet should, of course, have finished it off. Kelly, to their credit, didn't give up and gave themselves some kind of consolation when Gary Wales struck at the second attempt. Shades of too little, too late about the goal, but a crumb of comfort for Wales. Davy Hay would have taken quiet satisfaction over the quality of his performance, especially when it came out of the blue and with so many players missing. Brewster could be missing from next week. Was this the final payoff from a striker who has defied the years? If it was, he signed off in style. He could be doing this for Inverness next week.